I was grateful to do Moondoll and it was a wonderful experience, one that I would never change. Dad would be proud of us. I told him I'd look after you. I was at a stage school called Corona and um, they held auditions there for Moondar, but I wasn't put forward initially. It's a story that Colin tells better than me, but he'd actually asked to see the naughty ones, and I was one of the children that was being held back by the principals, and then I subsequently got in on Colin's behest. And so the school I went to was full of stage school kids, so it was it was full of people who were going to be the next big thing. So for them, me going off and doing something high profile was only grist to the mill. It was only natural that somebody would do that. Um, I, I, I'm trying to remember. I think, there was, I think there was a certain amount of surprise that it was me. Oh, Mum, do you have to go today? Couldn't you stay? Just for a bit? Rather than it being any kind of awe or... Um, uh, it particularly changing my relationship with anybody, I think there was a surprise that I was the one that that happened to. I think I was probably the last person they would have expected to do something like that because I was never a West End Wendy. I never had that kind of um, stage school finish to me. I remember um, just liking Colin and feeling um, interested and safe and intrigued by the whole project. And of course, you know, there, I, I was in no position to be anything other than incredibly um, excited and grateful. I was really young and it was a very exciting project and a leading role on BBC Children's Television. There was nothing not to like really about the whole thing. I remember the interview really well. I remember stepping over this threshold into this darkened hall where he was. It was a hall that was usually lit very brightly because it's where we did our our performances and our practice but it was very dark and he was sitting there at this table all on his own in a completely empty hall and I remember talking to him for a long time and connecting really well with the idea of the project and and him and the whole thing and it felt really um, interesting and it was great yeah Colin was great to work with and I I, I was just showing Colin my photo album that I'd, I'd collated some photographs while we were filming and I'd annotated them on the back and I've, I, I've never again looked at that or particularly the photographs. I've glanced at them but I, I'd never bothered to take them out and look at the back of them but I've written these annotations on the back of the, the photographs and there's one of Colin just you know in his sort of director pose doing something and I wrote on the back I just love that man. So I was very very enthusiastic about working with Colin. Um, he's, he's a lovely guy, a person of big integrity and a really kind person. It was really a romantic place to be and we were there for eight weeks and it was, it wasn't the whole eight weeks there but most of it was and it was just an incredibly peaceful, beautiful place to be. But it was very good, Colin and I just were talking about how this was one of the only jobs that he did that came in on time and part of the reason for that was that there were no distractions, there were no planes going overhead, there was no, you know, there was no nightlife, there was nothing really to distract from the filming and the house itself was very quiet. Um, I don't know to what extent we kept people out while we were filming or whether it was just was sort of undersubscribed and not very well visited. I think I've heard subsequently that Moondial did have a, an impact and the house itself became visited more. But it was a beautiful place to be, very um, very bonding for the, for the crew as well because we, we were all thrown together a lot of the time and just hanging out in the evenings in the hotel. It was like being on a school trip, a long extended school trip. <laughs> Helen came on set and uh, yeah, she didn't come very often, but we did, we did meet Helen, Helen and I met, yes. And um, yeah, I mean, Helen, apparently, according to, to Colin, Helen was um, quite taken with me in the role and thought that I was good casting, but I didn't have very much to do with Helen. And I think I was, a bit accidentally sort of tactless at one point by suggesting an alternative ending for a character in the story and Helen put me firmly in my place and said write your own books darling <laughs> and I thought okay I'm sorry better bury your head dear the mirrors are coming out to play I think really without some sort of dark edge it's very difficult to make any kind of good drama I think Disney is probably guilty of having made a lot of things saccharine for children but there is 
I think always going to be some sort of appetite for the dark side of things. The, the Grimm's fairy tales were written and had morals in them. There's historically always been a need, I think, for, for, for the arts and for drama to help us resolve complicated and darker feelings about things. But um, yes, Helen, Helen um, also wrote uh, lots of things that I think were just sort of magical and interesting. She had a really good, a good feel for, for the mystical drama. <laughs> um, there was a, um, a re-release of the book that had, um, I, I was on the front, I think Helena was on it and Tony, I think the three of us were on there. Just was looking through my diary. I had, I literally haven't looked at this since 1988 when it was written. I never go back over them particularly. Found this, dusted it off from my drawer on Tuesday the 9th of February. Um, went to the Moondal reunion. It was wonderful. I can't overstate how lovely it was to see everyone. I do love them. But I do remember that Tony um, introduced me to Anna Sher after Moondial, and so I had some contact with him afterwards. We bumped into each other once and had a really good chat, but we didn't sort of stay friends particularly. I stayed in touch with Jacqueline Pierce and um, Jane Raleigh, who was my tutor, and that was kind of it really in terms of friendship. But all the other actors were lovely to work with. Valerie and, um, and the actor Arthur, who played Old World, were really kind to me and, and lovely people, and they were really nice to work with. I wanted to know about the, uh, the two figures. The man and the boy. I tell you what I have got. A book on some dials. I've had it since I was a lad. Well, there were obviously restrictions to the hours that I could do. And I had a tutor who's my, still my friend, Jane Raleigh. Um, and she had to kind of fight pretty hard to get the time that we did have. We were supposed to be uh, in tuition for three hours a day. And I don't think really we were. Um, so there were restrictions on time. There were um, lots of uh, uh, processes involved in acquiring an equity card then. I don't think it's anything like as regulated now, but in those days you had to do a lot to get your equity card. It wasn't ever handed to you on a plate. I don't know how I did it this time. What do you mean, did it? Got back into your time. Oh, but you didn't, Miss Clever. Um, Jacqueline Pierce said something like, I'm the leading lady. And I said, oh, I thought I was the leading lady. And Jacqueline said, no, darling, you're the Juve lead. I'm the leading lady, obviously. And so I, I had to sort of concede that at 14, I hadn't quite earned the right to be called a leading lady. <laughs> I have special kinds of powers, and those powers are telling me that there is some kind of presence here. Where? I can't see anything. I didn't say see. There were people who found the fact that I was doing this hard. I'd go back to Cornwall where I did go to school and go and visit people who I'd been really close to, but they were proper kind of um, dyed in the wool kind of Cornish girls who I used to hang out with down there. And I think they found the otherworldness of it to intimidating and alienating and didn't like it. So it, it, it provoked different reactions from different people. Better bury your head, dear. I've been working with somebody for a while who um, only just admitted that he'd watched Moondial but had, you know, sort of kept that to himself. And in fact, he's not the only one. A few people at work have said to me, or oh, actually, I did used to watch Moondial. It may be that something that I said triggered the memory because, of course, it was a long time ago. And do I get people coming up to me in the street still? Yes, still, sometimes I do. But I don't think I've changed a huge amount. I had a phase where I cut off all my hair and dyed it blonde and, and totally changed my image. And then, of course, nobody would think to link Minty with that person. But now that my hair's of a similar length and, um, yeah, it's still, it, do, it does come up from time to time. And it's, it's fine because... It, it's something that people have quite a sort of sweet nostalgia for, I think. And I remember it generating huge amounts of excitement and having lots and lots of sort of interaction with people in the streets and going into schools and signing hundreds of autographs and 
and ha there was even a, you know, a, like a, someone was dealing with the mail that was coming in. There were sacks of mail coming in. Um, and I just don't know to what extent that would happen now because there is so much more choice um, and so many more distractions. It was more of an event to sit down and watch a TV programme. You had to make sure you were in, you couldn't miss it. And so it just, there was, and there was more of a mystery around the people who were involved in the making of those programmes because I don't think everybody felt the same sense of entitlement that they do now because there was less technology at your disposal. People are now all stars in their own living rooms and everybody has social media and different ways of feeling visible. But at that time there was a very sort of clear demarcation between people who did that for a job and that was what they did and people who didn't because yeah I don't think I don't think it would have nearly the same impact now that it did then. Look. James. Um, I woke up one day, uh, on my 30th birthday it was, and had this really powerful feeling that my life had changed, but I was still interested in acting, and I'd, st I'd actually recently done, done some work, and I was still feeling that it was all a good idea, but then suddenly something shifted, and I was reading Travels with My Aunt, a Graham Greene novel, and the character of the aunt at some point says something along the lines of, if you have lots of different experiences in your life, you have a longer life. There is some sense of chapters and journeys. And even though acting is, is a great adventure and you have lots of different experiences, there is a connecting thread. You are dependent upon others for employment. It's, it's not necessarily valuing a work ethic, although you do have to work very, very hard if you want to do well. And, and you know, and I certainly, uh, did experience periods of very hard work in acting, but it's not necessarily something that rewards hard, hard work. Um, so it was that idea of being slightly disempowered in my role with it and wanting also to do something that I felt was more altruistic and more meaningful that made me stop. And again, just that feeling that I wanted to bookend it and feel that looking at the work that I'd done over the years that I had worked, it was a very appealing career if I bookended it, if I had a start and a finish. But I could envisage it going through all kinds of ragged phases that dissipated the initial um, intention. So I wanted to feel that there was a closure of it. So I sent my equity card back and made a point of not doing it anymore. And I have had people try to persuade me to go back. But, and it's not impossible that that would ever happen, but it, it's not been attractive enough. The propositions that have come up haven't, haven't tempted me back. I've done things associated with it. I've done publicity, I'm here doing this, and I've gone off and done Doctor Who conventions and things that have been associated with some of the big finish work that I did, which is spin-off work from, from the Doctor Who series. So I've done things to do with promotion that I've found amusing or enjoyable but I haven't ever wanted to and as much as anything I haven't wanted to take a job away from somebody else who is taking it seriously as a career because you need those building blocks and if too many dilettantes are still dabbling in it it, it, it undermines the um, seriousness and the intent that people have to make a career out of it. Really.